We make ourselves present and loud, and we say enough is enough. Two, we run our own candidates for office. People who do represent us, people who are like us, who understand our struggles. And number three, we come together like this today, and we stand loudly and proudly saying that enough is enough, that we can and will make change together. Because no matter where you're from or what you believe in, everyone has the right to exist. Everyone has the right to live a life without being afraid. Everyone has the right to make their own life choices as long as they aren't hurting others. So enough of pledging allegiance to the flag. It's time to pledge allegiance to humanity. That is enough is enough and we are in this together. With that said, my name is Ashley Shade, and I love all of you. Thank you for being here. We love you, Ashley. Can we give it one more time for Ashley Shade? Yes. Yes. Black lives matter. Black lives matter. Black lives matter. I said. Black lives matter. Black lives matter. Ain't no power like the power of the people, cause the power of the people don't stop. Ain't no power like the power of the people, cause the power of the people don't stop. Ain't no power like the power of the people, cause the power of the people don't stop. Say what? Ain't no power like the power of the people, cause the power of the people don't stop. Next up on the mic, we have Catherine Enzor from the American Condom Association, also a member of LP Boston, Libertarian Party of Greater Boston. Amazing human, amazing work. I'm going to talk about it. All right. Hi, everybody. I'm Catherine. A um, little bit about myself. I am a mom. I'm a wife. Um, Former business manager, not currently, just stay at home, homeschooling mom at the moment. Uh, the way that I got into Kratom, I have had 15 knee dislocations or subluxations, which is basically just when it pops out, since I was seven. So extreme pain pretty much for as long as I can remember. That kind of led me into substance abuse, uh, an abusive husband. Um, after getting out of my abusive marriage, I was trafficked, homeless. Um, in case you didn't notice, I am missing a chunk of my leg from adulterated substances. Uh, and that leads me into Kratom. When I had, after I got sober, when I had my youngest, it ended up being an emergency C-section. And as you know, with emergency C-sections, it is a surgery, so they did put me on narcotics at that point. Once I left the hospital, absolutely terrified about relapsing, worried about my kids, and that's when I found Kratom at a friend's, a friend's funeral, actually. Um, it is a tea made from a leaf from Southeast Asia. It has been used safely for hundreds to thousands of years by people working in the fields to manage pain and energy. Uh, and we have had, as you know, I moved from Florida two years ago to here. Florida was the epicenter of the pill mill epidemic for years. And Kratom has actually become incredibly popular there. Oh, sorry, let me, I get a little nervous talking about my, my story and everything. Um, So, all right. It is in the coffee family, and um, people ask, so if it manages pain, does that mean it acts on opioid receptors? It does in the same way that coffee and chocolate and cheese do. Um, it is a partial agonist and partial antagonist, which means at the same time that it's acting on your 
brain. It is also blocking anything from proceeding further. So there is no risk of respiratory depression. It is a very safe way for people to manage pain, addiction issues. Um, and it can prevent harmful overdose situations when people are using it at the same time that they are abusing other substances. Um, I prefer it in a tea with peppermint and a little bit of cream and sugar because it honestly it tastes terrible nobody wants to abuse it because it tastes absolutely awful. Um, legislatively we at the American Crime Association are working on the KCPA which is the Crime and Consumer Protection Act um, nationwide state by state our most recent battle has been in Rhode Island which the way that their legislation is set up their uh, district attorneys are able to just blanket ban substances without any input from their constituents. Um, and right now we are trying to get the KCP Act passed so that we can undo that to allow safe access and consumption of the pure leaf to help with the opiate epidemic that we are still facing, that we face here in Boston. We're working on legislation here in Massachusetts. Um, sorry. Um, in 2016, something to support why this legislation needs to be supported, the DEA attempted to ban Kratom at a nationwide level. And we got over 24,000 people just to comment on the Federal Register. And for the first time in history, the DEA actually withdrew an emergency intent to schedule. That has literally never happened with any other substance in the history of the DEA. Um, our current problem is that the FDA is dragging its feet on designating Kratom as a dietary supplement. It is just a pure leaf, despite volumes of evidence in the affirmative. Uh, as well as Dr. Chris McCurdy of the University of Florida and Dr. Henningfield of the National Institutes of Health and the National Institutes of Drug Abuse, um, asserting and with their extensive research that it poses almost zero public health risk from the unadulterated leaf product. Um, and here's where I need to ask everybody something. Um, across New England, we're trying to get this passed is would ensure purity of the product and as well as having exponential community benefits insofar as public health potential. Um, if you could please get in touch with your state legislators and urge their support for the KCPA, the Kratom Consumer Protection Act, um, for ourselves, for our children, for our communities, um, where our local governments have fallen drastically short in their public health initiatives regarding Mass Ave, for example. We have the ability to make lasting differences in our communities um, for our future, for our children's future. And I am a you need living example of mm -hmm. the potential you need help? of Kratom yeah, and how it can help anybody uh, that may be living yeah. with pain, are you doing it by yourself narcotic or you medication have abuse, um, opiate dependency. I, like I just have so much time on my hands. It's ridiculous. Okay. I, mean, I, I do podcasts and I do stuff for my nonprofit, but so far, I don't um, Good. Okay, maybe I can have you on my podcast at Staples. Staples. Okay. I do there. Um, and then and um, I just talk about sense. COVID and how it impacts the community. What, which uh, Staples? Are you right here. At this, they, have a, they have a podcast room. Oh, they do? I Heart Radio Studio. They have a studio. Oh, and what, you, just have to, you just have to kind of sign up and file. Yeah, you sign and up. And mm -hmm. It's real nice. It's real nice. Oh, I'll tell you about that. Mm -hmm. Thanks for telling me that. Yeah. Well, we'll, just, well, we, we'll exchange information. Yes. Well, you gave me my information. Yes. So I have your card, and then we'll be in touch. Because, yes. I mean, I'm looking for work right now, and I'm at the same place right now. So I have a whole bunch of time right now. I'm free daytime and nighttime. Nighttime, I'm not doing anything new. So you might as well make myself useful to somebody's campaign. I know elections are in November. Kim, Jane, and Michelle Wu, they have their own campaigns, but still. I'm not supporting Kim, though. Thank you, Sean. Really? We love support. We love support each other. Her attitude is not. She's very. Stern.
Thank you. No, she just, she just. Uh, so my name is uh, Ryan Wolf, and uh, I recently came up with a uh, platform where uh, I believe citizens could have a stronger voice in government. It's an online forum where citizens vote on issues and questions that they'd like to hear a response from, and at the end of the day, a politician posts a live video response to that. Cool. So. That's awesome. It's kind of like crowdsourcing yeah. uh, local political issues. Oh, wow. And then getting a direct response from a direct live video response from the people who represent you. I think this is something that could give citizens a stronger voice in the government and also uh, be seen as a better way of connecting uh, a politician with the people who he, he or she represents. Um, so, this is an entrepreneurial pursuit that I've come up with. Uh, right now, I'm just building the community. Uh, we're very small right now, but what I could use is likes on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, the name of my concept is Grandstand. I'll be walking around handing out flyers. Uh, you can come up, talk to me. I'm happy to answer any questions about uh, my concept that you might have. But um, if this interests you at all, if you think it could be a good idea, uh, just like me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram. Uh, Instagram is grandstand underscore app. And Facebook, I have a page called Grandstand. Um, just do that, and we can make this kind of thing a reality. So uh, thank you for letting me speak, and uh, on to the next one. We love the work of representation. That's what we do here. That's what we're all about. The work of representation. Ooh. Actually, we might just have a copy right all here, you know? Next up, we have one of the primary organizers for this event, Heidi. going to read what we have on our flyer because it kind of explains the story. At a counter protest of a Trump rally in Swampscott, Mass on Saturday, December 12, 2020, prominent Boston activist and founder of the Freedom Fighters Coalition, Ernst Jean Jacks, Shimmy, was wrongfully arrested for an assault that didn't happen. As Shimmy, a black activist, danced to a music, music playing through a speaker, an elderly white woman, Linda Greenberg, threw her water in his face. Shimmy's natural reaction to take the water bottle out of her can was called a punch to the face. Not only was this entire interaction caught on video, the aggressor was also filmed admitting to police officers that she instigated the altercation unprovoked because his dancing was making her mad. The aggressor is not face, facing any repercussions. She is part of a hate group, um, which rallies every week in Swampscott. Despite the video evidence and admission of guilt to Swampscott police, she is not facing any charges. This is a civil rights violation, a constitutional violation, and an obviously racially charged accusation. Linda Greenberg needs to be held accountable for her assault on Shimmy and for her lie that turned his life upside down. So since December 12th, Shimmy has lost his job. He's not able to get another job because nobody wants to hire him because of the false charges, an assault on a person over 60. He lost his health insurance. He has been subject to online harassment and death threats. Um, this is not right. Where is the justice? We want to make this go as public as possible to help. Please donate to his lost wages at Cash App, Money Sign, Gene Dash Jax, or Venmo at Ernst Gene Jax, and call District Attorney Jonathan Blodgett and ask him to draw the charges on Shimmy. Um, and if you could pick up a flyer, we have this here with all the information and the District Attorney's number. And we also have a Facebook group called Free Shimmy. It's public. Please join to show support for Shimmy, and you can watch the videos for yourself. You can see what's going on with the case, 
and also we're going to be doing a music video a social justice music video and we're collecting pictures of people that support shimmy so if you take a picture of yourself holding a free shimmy sign anything you write or design or make up in support of shimmy we'll put it in our music video and you can have your group banner in the background so for example if it was mass peace action they could have their banner and stand with a free shimmy sign and that will be in the music video and this is all to support shimmy He's an awesome guy, sitting right there, Jimmy. <laughs> he does a lot for the community. He does weekly mutual aid and helps homeless people. And he's been involved in activism and done many big protests in Boston. And yeah, can't say enough good, good things about Jimmy. Heidi, what's the progress of the pro protests in Swamp Scott so far? What's your progress so far? So in Swamp uh, yeah. For reminding me so we have a stand out every monday in front of the lynn courthouse asking them to drop the charges um right now shimmy has to go to court in august on the 18th but we're demanding that they drop the charges and we're out in front of the lynn courthouse every monday from 11 30 to 1 30. and in swamp scott we support a black lives matter stand out um and we also will demand justice for shimmy at that Standout that's every Thursday from 10 to 12 in Swamp Scott on Monument Ave. And um, down the street is Diana Ploss's hate group, which counter protests Black Lives Matter and counter protests Shimmy. And they outright say Black Lives Don't Matter. Last week they were throwing up the white power sign. Um, they're just really hateful and they hate Black Lives Matter and they hate black people, minorities, uh, Islam, um, they're just a hate organization, LGBTQ, um, they're horrible people, and so, yeah, um, that yeah, please join us, we need some more support in, um, Swamp Scott, and we definitely need more support in Lynn at the courthouse, uh, the more the better, and I got an issue with the woman that threw water in his face. Uh, the day of, before, and after, and she continues to show up at, I call them white supremacist rallies. The fact that she's there week after week, and before the incident, proves to me that it was a racially motivated attack when she assaulted him. And then when the police come, they go for the black man, not the white woman. The police are fucking racist. I'm sorry, can I say that? It's and, too late. Uh, mm -hmm. so, and, so that's why I show up. I have uh, I, I, uh, been showing up since February. I met Shemmy, and he's a good man. He don't deserve any of this. And we got some of you people to come see. Thank you, yeah, and I hope to see some or all of you in Swarm Scott will in or both. And definitely online, join the Facebook group so we can all stay connected and support Shimmy. Yeah. say they covered all of it it's some bullshit um my homie right here is also jammed up in the same town for voicing his opinion um i also know another gentleman that facing a uh, criminal matter for also being in that man's yard so basically anybody that goes to that town to speak up against the system gets pinched so with all that being said if you can support heidi or any of these groups or any of these people that are going through shit in Swamp Scott, go for it because it's a bigger picture at this point. It's not even about my case. It's just about Swamp Scott being complicit in all the bullshit that goes on up there. So if you need any more info about how much Swamp Scott sucks, just talk to us. Peace. All right. Well, one more time for Heidi and Shimmy and everyone they work with. Let's get it.
Next up, I want to bring up the squad. Jacob, the Mingos, everyone Woo! in the squad, get up here. Now. Two brothers here running for city council. Y'all can't be up here alone. Not one at a time. We're here together. <laughs> right here we have Mingos DeRosa running for city council at large. Jacob Miranda running for the city council for District 4. We also have my hands. Shapina running for District 7. Let's All right. Let's start off with District 4. I'll keep it brief uh, because we are here in solidarity for all the demands that we have listed. We have listed demands because we demand change. We demand that these systems that have oppressed our people be dismantled bit by bit. We're not looking for this to be done tomorrow. We want to start today. We want to start today. Everybody tells us to wait. Wait until when? Wait until who's president? Wait until who's city council? No, we need change now. There's people dying on the street now. There's people going hungry on the street now. There's people overdosing on Mass Ave right now. Not tomorrow, but right yes. now. So we demand action now. And so this is what we're here. We're here demanding that our elected officials come up to the plate and that our, our, our residents, our constituents, also step up to the plate and kick them out if they're not doing their job. I might not make it into office, but we need to make sure that whoever's in there represents the best of our community. Yes. It's time for that change to happen. I'm going to pass it on to my brother here, Domingo Sarosa. I want to say thank you for the ones who showed up to support Jeremy. Uh, he's done the best he can with what he has. And at this moment, we're the best just showing up and showing support. A lot of things that we do, at times, we're by ourselves. We're trying to push an idea, uh, figuring out what's the best way to do it. And then that might, it might not be perfect, you know? It might not be perfect, it might not come off the right way, but at the end, uh, that first step is what gets you on that movement, moving forward, and, and taking your ideas and having others come out and support. On Wednesdays, we'll shut down that Sabbath. It's 10 people. We cause traffic on one of the most busiest intersections in the state of Massachusetts with 10 people. So it's not always about a big crowd. It's about that 300. If we can create that community of the Freedom Fighters and the Mass and Cast Project and the Another Chance Inc., the South End Roxbury Community Partnership, those little ideas that people come up with and they start It's not about being the same. It's about being different and being able to disagree and figure out how to make that disagreement an agreement. And this is why our politics continue to do as they please. We as the voters can't come together on the same issues of housing, education, substance use disorder, mental illness, and the list goes on. Jesus was homeless. He was born in the stable. How old, how old would he be if he was alive today? In his thousands, right? And we still face the same issue we face at birth. But we can't come together to get rid of the people who make the policies because we don't want to be politically involved. Our life is politics. Between chicken and ribs, you vote on that as a family. What flavored ice cream that you get this week versus next week? So I stand in front of you as a candidate for my third election. I've gotten better at pissing people off. Okay, the words got a little cleaner. I don't use a lot of the French acronyms that we like to use. They only work when it has to do with certain things. So being here today and seeing what Jeremy and others are trying to do and seeing the folks who came out. Today is my Independence Day, 5th of July, 1975. My, co my country, Cabo Verde, was liberated. All right. I, the of the Portuguese. I have relatives who fought in Angola to give me the right to stand here to talk shit. And I ask you guys, when you go back to your community, look at the faces you see here. Reach out on all our social platforms and make a connection. So when you go back to your community, remember those issues to be addressed is behind us. 
right. it comes back to Boston. This is what we're dealing with here in Boston. We have a flex of individuals coming from across the, across the Commonwealth, across the country, as far as Florida, looking for services to deal with the issues that they face in a different array from homelessness, substance use, mental illness, education. Um, I mean, the list goes on. So when you leave, those issues stay because they go with you, right? So you take them with you to your community, but they stay here with us, folks who live here in Boston. So we're asking you who live outside of Boston to join us when we speak on boycott Faneuil Hall. Do y'all know slaves were sold at Faneuil Hall? Yes. So if we yes. talk about Black Lives Matter, we gotta go to Faneuil Hall and make a change, all right? So these are the things that we here in Boston are facing. We're sitting in the tourist attraction. Every time they drive by, y'all should wave at them. They remind me of the animals of Madagascar. When they were looking at us like we're crazy. That's what they were doing. When Ashley was speaking, they're looking at us like we're crazy. Because they come here to look at our beautiful city, but then we were living here. It's not beautiful. There's things that we need to fix as a community. But I don't want to become a politician, okay? I don't want to talk your air off. I just want to give you guys a little bit of vibe. We the troublemakers, right? That's what it should say. We the good troublemakers. trouble, good trouble. We gotta, we gotta keep kicking the door down. Man. Yes, and then if we yes. Are able to put it back up, we can, because that's the kind of community that we have. A lot of us have different skills, and we need to be able to put those skills at the table, so we can do what we need to do. Shimmy's going through the same issue I'm going through because we care about our community. We can't go to the state house and knock on the door. Ain't no one there. But I bet you go to Swampscott. There's somebody at home. They knock on our doors for votes, but we can't knock on their doors without issues. And I appreciate your time for coming out on a Monday in the middle of the day. Jeremy, high five. Woo! And I like to get to you guys. So make sure y'all follow the group. Um, link up. If you got any information you want to share, give them out. I'm gonna pass it on to Joe Depina. He's running for District Seven. He's probably one uh, one of the most troublemaking guys in Boston. Oh. It doesn't matter who you are, he's going to tell you what it is. And I'm going to let him speak for himself, Joey DePita. Thank, thank you, Jeremy. Thank you, you are you absolutely gorgeous. I'm a hot mess. Um, I'm like, oh my God. Just again, my name is like, Joey DePita. Oh, really? I'm in real life. I'm, I'm a hot mess. <laughs> thank you. you. That lives in Roxbury. I've been in Roxbury for 20 years. Yes, I'm a troublemaker. Because they call me trouble because I don't hold my tongue. I say what's on my mind, and yes. I want to speak what's on my mind. And if you're bothering my community and you're coming for my people, I'm going to speak up on it. And that's not a problem. Like Domingo said, what we did, we went to Swampscott, and we went to uh, the governor's house. You know, the big house in Swampscott. Um, and Faker Baker wouldn't come out, you know, but... His wife had the audacity to go to put a harassment order on Domingos de Rosa for showing up at his house with needles. The same thing that's right here in this lawn because I walked, I just walked through this park and there's a lot going on in this park. Right in the front yard of the Baker's state house where he's, wherever his office is in there, I can care less. But um, what we need to do is we really need to come together and be united. I find that also oh often different groups are fighting each other and different things are going on and people are fighting for power instead of fighting for the people. And when we have state officials going to take out restraining orders on constituents because they don't like what we have to say to them because they're not treating us properly, that's the problem. The level of discrimination against the LBGTQ community is a big problem for me. We should be able to live our lives. We don't bother nobody. And we want jobs. Yes. Why should we not be able to work? Because of who we choose to love or the way that they say God was God. We were, we were made by God and we are God's children. But we are only God's children for a second in their mind. But when it comes to opportunities for the LBGTQ community, it's very limited. And if you don't know somebody that knows somebody to get you in some way, you're stuck. And if you're not a Caucasian high city LBGTQ member, it's hard for you to work. And we all know that, everybody that's part of the LBGTQ community. 
So I'm continuing to fight to the city hall because I feel like there's a lot of things that need to be done. And there's a lot of voices that need to be heard. And there's a lot of bigotry that goes on in city hall and hate. They continue to say we don't want to hate, but they hate on all of us. If we don't fit their, role, their little motto, we don't fit it, we don't fit in. And the minute we contest them, we end up like <laughs> Domingos, myself, and Shimmy, with politicians taking us and put us harassment orders. I don't know if you all know, but just last Monday, Liz Miranda put a harassment order on me for speaking my mind about her on my platform. Because she was flying in and out of state and doing things that she shouldn't have been doing with a married man, if you all get the riff. And I got a hold of the, I got a hold of the file and I blasted it and guess where I ended up at? Roxbury Court wore a harassment order to stay 15, 15 feet away from her because she's an elected official and we spoke my, I spoke my mind. So these are the things that I want to address as an elected official to make sure that these issues are addressed. That the Boston police are not over here arresting us for nothing. We, may, we, we, we are citizens just like them. We are humans just like them. And like you said earlier, Ashley, this is about humanity. It ain't about the flags, honey. This is about humanity. And I can argue and fight with us, but at the end of the day, we all gotta come back together. And we gotta fight this fight. And when it's right, it's right. And when it's wrong, it's wrong. And what I believe what the, the politicians are doing to people like us, like Domingos and Shimmy and myself, the people that speak up is who they usually want to silence. They don't like to hear us. So I don't want to take a lot of your time, but I just wanted to give you that synopsis of what's going on and who I am. And I'm going to tell you, regardless if I win this race or not, I'm still going to be fighting. I'm still going to be doing my podcasts and shows and talking about what they're not doing right. Thank you for your time. Thank you for organizing this. And it just so happened that our, me and the Mingos was at our flag raising where we just got discriminated against and we weren't allowed to be with our prime minister, but it was only the chosen few. And so we walked up here and uh, I appreciate everybody for allowing me to have my time and talking to you all. Thank you. All right. One more time for the squad. First, next up, we got Battle First Aid, Queen Battle, out there on the front lines, medics at all the protests. Sure. Let's get it. Thank you for coming through. Thank you, guys. Hello, hello. Thank you to the Greater Libertarian Party, uh, Party of Boston. Thank you. Let's give a round of applause. The Greater Libertarian Party of Boston, and also to Jeremy. He has been working hard. Um, I would ask that you guys send all donations cast at Venmo to Jeremy and his organization. Thank you so much for having me here today. Again, I want to go ahead and give a shout out to all the street medics that have made it through this pandemic, all the street medic teams across the United States. I have a nonprofit here in Boston that was founded in Boston called Battle First Aid Responder Services. I have a whole speech made. There's street medics all over, and what we do is I know you guys all remember when the National Guard here was here in Boston this same time last year. All the businesses were boarded up. The businesses were boarded up. The streets were very empty. Everything was closed down. And still, people like this individual, Jeremy, as well as all the, all the organizations, the community organizations out there, Black Lives Matter of Boston, everybody, all the, all the parties came out and still support the movement support for racial injustice, support for uh, police brutality came out and we still came together as a community to say enough is enough. When the businesses were boarded up, when nobody would service us, we still came together as a community and say enough is enough and we will do whatever it is to protect our rights. And you know how it is when you go to a business I as well, even though I am a college graduate, I'm an educated black young woman, it is horrible when a business will not service you. It is really, really sad when a business will not service you. 
And so I had that experience coming here, living in Boston, and now I'm still dealing with that today. So again, I want to thank Jeremy, as well as to uh, the Greater Libertarian Party of Boston. I'll go ahead and have a quick speech. Again, I want you guys to go out there, support uh, support all the street medic teams, as well there's a couple issues coming up in the State House, as well as some legislations going on all across the United States. I know you guys, it might affect you, it might affect your family members, it might affect those involved. The rent eviction moratorium has been extended 30 days to July, Saturday, July the 31st, 2021. So if you still need help and assistance with your rent, or if you're in, having issues with your foreclosure, foreclosure, mortgage issues, that, that National Federal Rent Eviction Moratorium has been extended to this to uh, in three weeks to Saturday, July the 31st, 2021. So all of you there, all of you guys, speak to your land, landlords, speak to your congressmen, to speak to your city councilmen. I know there's other issues that are more important, but people are losing their homes. Okay, pandemic unemployment insurance is ending. People are losing their unemployment insurance. People are losing their medical insurance because those same same benefits that provided to them before the pandemic have been given an extension during the pandemic. And so far, those extensions are now being delayed up until a certain point. I know what happens here. I'm going to say this very important to the tourists out there as well as you guys here today. You have to know this. It's very important. What happens here in Massachusetts as well as New York happens all around the world. All around the world. So do not, do not forsake that just because you are one person, you are by yourself. Don't think that. Don't, don't think that. As well as my young brother right here who has the, um, the uh, website for the politicians. Thank you so much for that. Your platform, your platform. And think, just because you are by yourself in the state of Massachusetts, here in the city of Boston, it is very important because everybody's decision matters. Everybody's choice matter. You are here, we're here today in front of the Massachusetts State House. We are here today in front and right here in, in the, in the, um, in Governor uh, Charlie Baker's administration and Governor Andrew Cuomo's administration. These administrations have made major impacts across the world. Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, anything social media has to do with Charlie Baker, okay? Charlie Baker. So you, you think it's very important to know that every single decision, anytime you set up an organization, you have impact, you have opportunity. Your organization, it doesn't matter who you come from, you are making a positive impact in the community. Okay, everybody's decision, everybody decision knows. And I know Charlie Baker, he is very conservative. He has very conservative opinions, but still, you can still make a choice and decision. Right now, we have the mayoral uh, elections going on. We have the city council elections going on. We have the uh, district by district elections going on. Not just only here in Boston, but all across the United States. So I would encourage you guys, it's going on in Georgia, it's also going on here in Massachusetts. So don't think just because you see it on TV, it doesn't, it doesn't matter, it doesn't impact you. Because everybody's vote counts. Everybody's vote counts. And during, and during the protest, the George Floyd protest, I was, as well as other people were handing out voters registration cards. Okay, I know some of you may or may not like Kim Jane, but there are other candidates involved. Still go out there and encourage to get out there and vote. Your vote counts, okay? Your vote counts. So I'm very happy to be here. I had a whole speech prepared. <laughs> so thank you to Jeremy, as well as for you and your families right now, COVID, the pandemic is still not over, okay? Over 600 and 5,810 Americans have lost their lives due to this pandemic, whether it was recorded as a COVID, COVID virus illness or whether or not, okay? Still, over more than half a million Americans have lost their lives due to this pandemic, as well as over 3.5 people around the world, 
have lost their lives due to this COVID-19 coronavirus novel, whatever it is called by the World Health Organization, virus, okay? So it may not impact you as an individual here in the state of Massachusetts because Massachusetts has great resources. But if I know, if you speak to cousins, our friends, our high school classmates in other cities or in other parts of the world, they don't have the same resources in Massachusetts that we have, okay? Now, like myself, I am part of, I am part of, I, I, I did formerly serve United States Army Reserves. I'm also part of the homeless community, okay? But still, I, I am available to take resources that are here in New York and also in Massachusetts. We have City Hall right there that's available. We have two on one. We have American Red Cross. There's and other nonprofits like here, like the Greater Libertarian Party, as well as other parties, Socialist Black Lives Matter, that you come out to and you can speak to somebody and say, you know what, I have a question. I have a question about the COVID virus. I have a question about my rent. I have a question about my utility bills. I have a question about my family and this illness, okay? So speak to somebody, speak to your legislators, do what you do. I have a whole speech prepared. <laughs> but before that, I'm gonna read the very end of my speech. The world is still not over. We are midway through a brand new year and here in 2021 have more to learn. It is not enough to stand on the steps of Boston Commons and not declare that yes, it does take more than one person to make a change. But more than that, two or three persons and even more to know that that change was made. To confirm that change and to risk more than above all, the entire community to live in the abundance of that change. So thank you so much, Jeremy. I really appreciate you. And also one thing I want to say right quickly because um, and as well as all to all the veterans out there. Yeah. Mental illness is a very important issue. Okay, I'm a recipient of services here in the, in the Boston area. For those of you who are going through any kind of issue, whether it's anxiety, depression, stress, anything, I would encourage you, okay, here in Boston Commons today to reach out, to reach out for services. Right now, during the pandemic, okay, domestic violence and depression has increased more than 2.5 times during the coronavirus pandemic. Domestic violence cases have rose extensively, as well as issues of depression. Now, the suicide rates during the pandemic have decreased, but the cases of depression and anxiety and mental illness have risen extremely. I just want you to know, whoever is struggling with any kind of issues, with any kind of anxiety, with any kind of social issues, getting along in society, know that you are not alone, okay? Because here in Boston, as well as New York, I've been kicked out of so many establishments, it's so ridiculous. <laughs> I've been kicked out of Boston Logan Airport, I've been kicked out of shelters, I've been kicked out of malls, but still I'm here today to say that I'm not alone in what I do or who I am, and I know that other people are not alone. If you are struggling with any kind of issues with suicide, with addiction, know that you are not alone. You are never alone. There's a national number, it's called 1-800-SUICIDE. There's also other alliances, other community organizations, United One, called 201. For, there's free counseling or low end cost counseling services. Okay? So and I would encourage you, whoever's struggling right now, if, even if it's game related, know that you are not alone. Okay, thank you. So thank you so much, Jeremy. I really do appreciate it. Thank you to the Greater Libertarian Party of Boston. Thank you so much. I wish we could have more people out today. <laughs> But thank you guys. God bless you. Thank you, Boston. Thank you. Woo! Woo! Good job. Thank you. I really wish we could have had more folks all. Amazing.
let you know, July 4th, everybody thought it was going to rain. Everybody pushed back events last minute, but that didn't stop us from showing up. No, it didn't. All right, next up, the series features, we got Mass Peace Action in the building. Yeah. yeah. Just thank you. Right after, Mass, right after we hear from Mass Peace Action, we're going to get into some performances. Uh, I, got a few, I got a little poetry right there for y'all. We also got Vermin Supreme out here. A lot going on. Let's hear it for Jeremy for getting this together. Bringing the performers in. Now someone was talking a little bit earlier about Boston, right? And about troublemakers. Boston is about making good trouble. We just had July 4th, right? And we need to let all the tourists know, all the people walking by, that this is what Boston is about. It is about using our liberties, not just talking about them, but putting them into practice. My name is Brian Garvey. Uh, I'm a peace activist and an advocate. I work with Massachusetts Peace Action. We're the largest anti-war organization in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And I think I'm talking to a friendly crowd. I think you understand that war, a constant state of war, and liberty are incompatible. Give it up. Yes. The national security state, including the police, are eroding our democracy and destroying American liberty. But the myths that we have in this country are oftentimes the exact opposite. Look at the quote right behind me. Liberty Mall, dedicated to our soldiers and sailors in the Great War. Now, I don't have a problem with our soldiers and sailors. I have a problem with the system. But this belief, this belief that war is war and militarism is what gives us our liberty is dead wrong. Perfect example, that war. Have you heard of the Espionage and Sedition Acts? They gut free speech, and they use them to throw people in jail for opposing US wars, right? And not just during World War I, they are still using them today. Have you heard of Daniel Ellsberg? Have you heard of Edward Snowden? Have you heard of Chelsea Manning? Have you heard of Julian Assange? These people have all been tossed in jail or prosecuted under the Espionage and Sedition Acts, passed in 1917 and 1918. So this idea that wars are what preserve your liberties, it's just not true. It's just not. And let's, let's talk a little bit about our soldiers, our sailors, our Marines, our airmen people with the Coast Guard. Did you know that veterans of the war in Afghanistan now oppose that war at higher rates than the general public? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. I say we should listen to them. They've been there, right? And I say that 20 years of war is long enough. I don't think that's too controversial. Is it gonna take another 20 years in Afghanistan to get the job done? It doesn't make any sense, right? It doesn't make you more free. It doesn't make people in the Middle East more safe to bomb them and supply weapons to that region over and over again. It doesn't make sense. You know what it does make? It makes money for the military industrial complex. And the military-industrial complex, the national security state, it seems like it's far away, right? But they are all over Massachusetts. One example, a little company called Raytheon Technologies. They have facilities all over eastern Massachusetts. They are the second or third largest weapons maker in the world. And they are headquartered in Waltham, Massachusetts. Just like a 15-minute ride away. And you want to know how powerful the military-industrial complex is, Raytheon in particular? 
Biden and Trump, they couldn't be more different, right? That's, that's what they'd like you to believe. Well, Biden's defense secretary, Lloyd Austin, where does he come to us from? Straight off the board of Raytheon Technologies. Trump's last defense secretary, where did he come from before he joined that administration? He was the top lobbyist for Raytheon Technologies. This is not a bipartisan, this is not a partisan problem. This is a bipartisan consensus on foreign policy that is destroying our liberties and costing us a fortune. It's gone on Democratic and Republican administrations alike. We need to break the cycle and take the power back from these corporations, many of them that are literal merchants of debt, that don't have your security in mind. You know, they have their pocketbooks in mind. And this gets to the issue of militarized police as well, because wars abroad do not stay overseas. Those chickens, they come home to roost. When you see police officers driving around neighborhoods, often neighborhoods predominantly of color, looking like occupying forces, driving around MRAPs, tanks, wearing military equipment, toting around assault, assault, assault rifles, treating people like they are occupying a foreign country. Well, I have to say, a lot of those folks that are in our police force right now, they got their start in their late teens and their early 20s occupying Iraq, occupying Afghanistan. And that has an effect on people. The, these folks didn't get PTSD for nothing. You know, the things that they were forced to do, put in a position where there is no legitimate mission, there is no definition of victory, it's just endless war. Great's on a person. They talk about casualties, but they don't talk about the suicides of our service members. We spend a quarter of a trillion dollars, maybe more depending on the black budgets, and yet thousands of our veterans sleep out on the street every night. The rhetoric does not match the reality. Now when you spend that much on war, and I'll just, I'll just give you one quote. Martin Luther King said, in 67, in a speech that made him very unpopular at the time. A nation that continues to spend more on military defense than on programs of social uplift is approaching spiritual death. And still, today, we are spending well over 50% of discretionary money. Over 50% of your federal income is going to the war machine. And that's the reason why we can't have nice things. That's the reason why we can't have decent infrastructure in this country, or health care for all, or an education system that we can be proud of. The national security state is destroying our liberties, and it is making us weaker, not stronger. Because, right, we had 600,000 people die from COVID-19. Did all the bombs and tanks and planes save our people from that? No, because you can't bomb a virus. You can't nuke climate change. We need to redefine what national security means and we need to demand, demand an end to endless war. And we should remember that the Founding Fathers, all their faults, this started as an anti-imperialist project. And it is, it is a shame that we are now the biggest empire in the history of the world. If we want to take our country back and make the changes that we really need in this society, we need to end our endless wars, and if it's about protecting the troops, 
and bring them home. That's all I got to say. Woo! Check out MassPeaceAction.org if you want to get involved in stopping the next war and getting rid of the ones that we currently have going on. Come up and talk to me. Check out MassPeaceAction.org. We, we can do it together. Thanks again for Jeremy for setting this up. Thank you. Give it up for Brian. I look forward to developing a stronger libertarian mass, mass peace action in Elias throughout this year. Thanks, uh, I'm Tim here as operations director for the Libertarian Party. I really look forward to seeing that. Seeing the first thing that happens. How are you? I do want to call Truth Power to a few names, to a few communities. I think it's fun. No. Uh, I want to acknowledge first and foremost that we are sitting, we are standing and protesting on Native American land, specifically the United States, Massachusetts, and the Rockingham tribes. I want to call for us to be kind to indigenous sovereignty, indigenous empowerment, and indigenous justice. And I also want us to acknowledge what's happening in our own backyard. Janelle. Janelle is a woman from Randolph whose son was ran over by the Randolph police. Ran yes. over him one time, then backed up over his body. And as she protests right outside the police station, they tackle her and get her on grounds of harassment. Is that, is that fair? Is that fair? Hey, Domingo, if you need help with your campaign. Oh, yeah, that's what we were just talking about. And they tackle Here, call you me. as you protest Yeah, let me give you one of my flyers. This is the system we are living in. Oh, Lord. <laughs> yes. This is my palm card. Okay. I can go to your website. Yeah, check me out. Let me get a picture of me and Domingo. For sure. 